all the parts have been buffed so this is the ideal time to introduce you to some of the assembly jigs I've had to build on the side. I'll put this aside now. I haven't broken up this yet. Um, I'm going to pop it out. Not that there was much to it, but I might have to remove some of the wood filler that might have crept between the seams as I was filling it up and I can feel with the scraper some of this um, I'll have to actually make a much better effort with that. In fact, what I might even do is get a wet rag and wipe it off. Look, I'll probably take that off with magnifying glasses, but in the meantime, hopefully, I can demonstrate, as I said, some of these jigs. Now, the slider, or the top, the actual top, consists of a base layer which is that and remember I was telling you right at the start it needs to be captivated that's the part that has to be captivated then on top of that actually I'll use this this one to line everything up um, second layer goes on that's number one this is the layer that the slide, or actually these, these three pieces get glued to that. And these two pieces are the sliders, um, which don't get glued. Well, well, yeah, they don't get glued at all. And then on top of that, you glue these pieces, that goes on the slider there, etc. Now, the whole thing about it is, as you'll notice, the slider, let's get that out of the way, to be, to be able to slide, it has to sort of sit like that, and then slide along that type of a runner. The one inside is smaller. Now to get that centred, which is the most critical thing, I have this jig whereby that takes, let me see, um, here we are, I've got it marked that it takes layers two and four, that sits in there which means that that, whoops, layers two and four, that now comes in like that. Then on top of that where is it? Layers 2 and 4. Well, that's a face of layers 2 and 4. That goes on there. As you can see, that overlaps that by the required amount. So once we put that in there, that in there, that goes on top of that. And now I can apply glue to that put that in there and then you'll find that these have been uh, sanded down to quite a about sort of like half a mil lower than the height of these other two which means I can then clamp a piece of board on top of that clamp that down and that will force these straight. The fact that I'm gluing two pieces together and with the pressure on them, it'll stop, take out hopefully any buckle that might be in the piece, um, especially these ones due to the um, adding of the moisture from the wood filler. For these two, they have to be naturally glued together. They're the, they're the side faces that cover the magnet. I have this one. It's a 6mm unit. 
hopefully, if I remember correctly, that's also been sanded down. I've got a number on there, not that it matters one or two, but the number basically uh, indicates the orientation, so it's that way up. That goes in there, that will then naturally get glue applied, and what I'll do this time, normally I use super glue, but this time I'll use PVA glue, um, so that I can cover the entire face, hoping that I'll get a better adhesion, because if I just dab super glue, super glue is only holding on for, to little pieces, and the MDF can delaminate. With the entire surface covered in PVA, hopefully it will do, and not only that, PVA will dry slower, so I've got a chance to, once it starts, there you are, again, it sits like that, that'll get clamped on. I'll leave it on there for about 15 minutes to give the PVA time to bond, and then I can pull that off and then sort of put weight on it elsewhere, but that way I can ensure that that will stay dead flat. Well, at least that's my theory behind this whole concept. There's that. Now, for the sliders, the sliders have, where are they, where are they, where are they, come on, here we are. Um, I'll go and get a, pin, I just got a pin to pop out this uh, body filler that's been in there, that's not needed, clean that up a bit. Now the whole idea of this is that I can have now, and the reason for that hole through there, I can now have two layers of 3mm MDF to support the guide pin that will go in there. If I only, if I didn't cut a, a hole in that, I'd only have 3mm MDF to put in and to me that's not as stable as I would have liked. So to have 6mm, much more stable and not only that, here we are, these are the buttons that I haven't popped out yet. Again, you know, I say popped out only because it's got the wood filler around the edge. Now, what I've got to do is I've got to work out the actual orientation of it because it's a snapshot of the pattern that was under there. And what I do with this, again, there's another jig. This jig here will sit, the slider sits in there, and this jig centres that. So I just put a dollop of super glue on there, push that in, once, uh, give it a few seconds for it to dry, take that off, lift that off and hopefully that will be properly centred. Then, with it being centred, I can then hammer in the, because it's going to be a tight fitting dowel, because a dowel is theoretically 4mm and these holes are 3.9 mil, so it's going to be a tight fit and it might have to be hammered and with that button there it will captivate it. So that's how these little alignment jigs will work. Again, when I go in the glue up that's a no-go area so I doubt if I'll take any pictures or if I do there'll be more a bonus than um, as uh, planned. The other thing too, for the maze itself, I retained the cutout, I don't know whether I mentioned this before, and I won't know whether I did until I come back in to edit the video, and by that time it'll be too late to know whether to say what I'm going to say. So, what I have done is maintain, kept the frame or the internal guts of the maze that I cut out. Two reasons, I can then use that to stabilise the uh, Ross as I'm sanding it and also when I'm buffing, I put it on a backing board, just grab a piece of MDF backing board and hold that under the buffer 
so it doesn't the buffing wheel doesn't catch in these things the thing I'm concerned about is if it catches in there and it often does on that but I can resist that um, it'll rip that out of my hands and I've just got a concrete floor and believe me concrete dense MDF much better than MDF dense concrete so having said that I'll probably glue up all these items again I might come into a quick dirty video while I, one of them anyway and I'll be moving over to the other table to actually assemble the box which is really just a matter of uh, um, gluing up the sides uh, and that's it but the important thing to do is make, because I'm not doing it in again re, oh, sorry I rephrase that because this is now polished I'll be using CA glue to glue this together and because I'm using CA glue I won't be able to sort of like fit that there and then move this into place so I'll be doing it one side at a time and because I'm doing it one side at a time I've got to take extra care to ensure that this is perpendicular and everything is square otherwise you finish up with the last side of the box and things just don't fit together so that's my plan and we shall see actually I've got to admit I love the feel and the look of these patterns after they've uh, been buffed and uh, sanded I reckon they actually look quite classy well I think they do so there you have it um, yeah that fits in there that's the two sides all right um, what is it it's 9.30 now, that's p.m. I'm going up for a vino. Uru for the time being. Against my better judgment, I'm going to go through the glue up of one segment of the top. Because as you'll notice, um, these pieces, they're all the same. However, the piece that gets glued to the base of the top are different. Um, they are different to either distinguish between a runner and a runner guide now piece five is basically the piece that's going to go going from top to bottom of the lid or the top one is the top two is the, the two and four are the sliders three is the one in the middle and the five is at the bottom but as you can appreciate being at the bottom it's got to line up like that so the overhang is only on that side. This one, being on the bottom, is flush. If it was a top piece, it would be the other way around. And naturally, um, with uh, the middle, it would be in the middle. Although there would be three mil either side there. As a runner, it would be up the other way. But anyway... The way this works is, I have this frame, I've got these little pieces, this one says it's L4, L2 and L4 sizes and that's not what I'm going to do, I'm doing a, uh, L, uh, level 1 and level 2. Now the way this is set up, is I've got L1 engraved there, L5 there, which means that if I'm doing the top layer, I have L1 on the bottom. If I'm doing the bottom layer, I have it here because they're offset by different distances from the edge. Now, I've got to work out which is a smaller piece because I naturally I'm going to apply the glue to just a smaller piece. So... Naturally, um, it's going to be the common, where the hell is the common one? Oh. Where is it? Oh, this is ridiculous. 
Okay, I'll go and find the common one. But I had everything like I set up. Um, this is the face, the 20 mil one. So that'll go down the bottom. But before I do, I'll line up my clamps, these mini boards and these clamps are absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, just to put them on. Try to centre this up. Well, I've got a rough idea where it is. It's over the holes. So, I hope you can see all that. Now, when I'm applying the glue, I'm going to try and keep everything within the viewfinder, but who knows. Again, the orientation of the number tells me which way it's up. That's the face piece. Now, it's a top piece that we're worried about. No, it's level 5. So level 5 goes on there. And here we are 5. So that's going to go on there. The first thing to do is a, a drop of PVA. It's tight bond 3 glue. That's all I ever use. Unless I'm concerned about the colour of the join. I have a swag of these Rockler silicone brushes only because they wash out easy but I always forget to wash them out oops as you can see I've already gone over the edge I always forget to wash them out and naturally I go reaching for it I'll give you a little bit more glue I don't want to put too much on because I've squeezed out but then on the other hand I don't particularly want to starve it of glue because uh, I need good adhesion because a lot of these pieces are warped and they need to be straightened out. That's why I'm going this, uh, oh, where's my tissue? That's why I'm going tight bond as opposed to super glue because I can put it on the full face. Super glue I won't, so it's only bonding in pieces and it's more likely to come undone. Okay, now put on the right way. Now, the way this is set up, they've been all these jigs have been sanded down so they're slightly below the top level of this. By putting this on here, I've marked this as top only because this has more imperfections that's perfectly smooth I've been using this as a glue up top so it's got stuff on it, it's not dead flat make sure this comes down equally lock it the pressure doesn't have to be super tight um, only because all I'm trying to do is flatten it out and it hasn't got much resistance now normally what I would have as I say, I've got this thing here. I normally have water in here and I drop that in. In fact, I'll go and get some water. No, I'll, I will. I'll actually wash this out and uh, have it ready for the next time because I remember. And I'm going to let this stand for 10, 15 minutes, which will give sufficient time for the PVA to bond so that it won't separate when I take off the pressure. Alexa, set timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. I use Alexa, and again 15 minutes later I'll come back. One of the things I love about these mini workbenches is that uh, when you cram for space, you can quite easily pick it up, move it out of the way, where it won't cause too much damage and 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 grab another one been set up for uh, further work the press plate naturally to keep it flat 
and for this one I'm going to use these uh, sideways now that goes actually that'll go down face first this becomes the main edge and listen to the guy who said I don't do videos of glue ups alright where's my brush okay we got another brush now the problem with MDF even with this it is actually soaking this up quite quickly I don't want to put too much on but if I don't put enough on it'll soak up much quicker so I'll have to keep sorry probably out of the viewfinder topping it up but if I put too much on the squeeze out we'll let the we'll have the thing uh, glue to the jig frames and I naturally don't want that so I do want it on all edges right across the edge which is something that I found I would have trouble with if I use super glue you know you can't manipulate super glue this easily even the thick stuff put that aside now make sure the perimeter is devoid of any overshots of glue the one good thing about the oh, now make sure I've got this lined up the right way and again this is about a mill proud centered on that lift those things up now put the plate the pressure plate on and the one good thing about these toggle clamps is you don't really have to adjust them this comes back I've dismissed Alexa however Alexa set timer for 15 minutes 15 minutes Starting that's for the other one now I can lift this off and hopefully that should be ready for the next glue up now what I need to do here is balance this out and I'll show you why in a second over at the other end of the table saw which now is my workbench this comes over laid down again flat I'm just using another piece these haven't been glued together just to keep the same height that goes on there and as Swambo said use the dumbbell so I went and got the second one she's inferring the first one was me put it on there and I'll just leave that on for again 15-20 minutes maybe half an hour doesn't really matter um, and I go off and do the next one